Hey everybody, part three, working on my bib for my motorcycle. Good news, I got my rounds from Weaver Leathercraft. They pulled through for me. Great products. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and cut these holes that I laid out for these studs. This kind of got an angle in it, so good. Now these should just fit right in. I already did this side. I jumped ahead. Piece of scrap, scrap leather. Little punch. Get you down all the way. Out nicely. Now I have to bend these over. Made that plain black piece of leather pop. I have some other leather that I'm tempted to sew glue onto the back of this. It's yeah. looks pretty sharp. Come along pretty nice. Okay, now I think I'm ready to go on. What I need to do now is I need to smooth out these edges a little bit. This one thing. Just to keep them from curling up. That looks pretty sharp. But see how this edge is rolled down and on the other side that I haven't done it still has the sharp edge on it here what I'm doing is getting that smoothed out with that roller okay 
Okay, I got that done now. What I'm going to do now is I want to protect my fender from these studs that are folded over on the back. What I ended up doing is getting me a piece of suede leather, kind of like a chamois, what it looks like. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact cement to the back of this, at least covering these studs around right here. But first I'm going to get a rough idea. My tactical pen. I'm not worried about the pen markings because I'm going to trim it after it's glued on. Or at least come work somewhere close to it. It's just basically giving me a rough idea where my glue is going to be. But anyhow. One at least an inch or whatever. I'm surprised. Ran out of video space again. But anyhow, I got my rubber contact cement here and here. Got it all ready to go. Basically, I'm just trying to get it close. I don't have to be exact. Now I just have to trim it. Got that all trimmed off now. Now I got these holes to trim out. Flip them over. But I got that one cut out. This one here I just... Now to make sure that stays on there, I'm going to lay out a stitch line all the way around it to where it won't, won't come off for sure, for sure. Okay, it's still running. Well, I got a seam measure here. I think it's on like four centimeters, but all I'm gonna do is drag. I might put it on. But this will give me a a guideline where my stitches are gonna line up. basically a fingernail scratch trying to get it in there but you can see just that little line scratch that's what I'm going to use as a guide to stamp my holes
and on this one I'm going to start on the corners and work my work my way down and work my way to the center and wherever it comes out in the center that's where I'll split the differences up and make it look fairly you know nice so I'm going to start at that corner there and then this corner and work my way out to where it lines up on the corner and same with this one okay I got several different multiple tools to where I can use for my stitches these are what I use to lay out my stitching I started my first one here's a better look at the stitching tools this fit over here and then I'll switch back and forth Sometimes they come out perfect when you get to the middle. Sometimes you have to adjust it just a little one way or the other to where it looks right. This, since this is kind of curving, I just don't want to lay it straight. I kind of line up the, the back hole and then the last tooth on my line, that scratch that I put on it. Gonna come out pretty nice. Come out a little bit gap, but not too bad. I think it'll look all right. But I'll hammer these out, the rest of these out real quick, and then I'll be right back. Hey, there's a look at it with all the stitch laid out in it so now I just need to get my all and sew it on there be right back okay what I'm gonna use I'm gonna use an awl on my stitches I usually use the saddle stitch but that's usually when I'm making something stronger together this is just basically decoration and just to make sure this don't peel off but there's a trick to these awls With a 
another all. You have to make sure you have all this extra thread from the back side to go all the way around the whole thing from the back side. So measure. Not enough. That should be enough. But just to make it easier for me to f find this other end, I'm just going to throw it on this needle. is loop through this stitch that I poked through here. So when I pull back it will give me a loop and then all I do is pull through that loop. That makes my first stitch. Go to the next one. It's starting to look right. show you this here in a second after I'm done with getting it all I'll go ahead and finish it all up and show you what it looks like then alright we got the stitching done that's what that's starting to look like now alright now I just have to stain the back again now all I have to do is stain this here.
but coming along pretty good. sure I get the edge I don't want it showing anywhere it take the stain really good there we go now the only thing left I have to do is put it on the bike soak it down with a little bit of water to make it pliable and then I'll put some weights on uh, a weighted blanket on it and let it dry and then I'll put sheen on it to make it hard what I'll do is get this to put on here so I can wet it down and mold it to the fender Keep the fender from getting all wet or nasty or anything like that. What I'm going to do is wet it down. Moisten it all down. Let it absorb all the water it can. And then I'll put another bag over the top of it. Just to keep this weighted blanket, I got bought a weighted blanket at Walmart. Weighs 12 pounds. Leave that blanket on there. Let that dry. And then after that, I should be good to go. I'll be back in a little bit. Here it is. All done.